नियतम कुरु कर्मत्व कर्मचायोह कर्मण शरीर यात्रा पिचितेन प्रसिद्धोत्त कर्मण How would you define a karma yogi the one who continues to tread on the path to righteousness regardless of who follows or the one who continues to strive for the betterment of society irrespective of the obstacles he encounters for us it was and will always be the legend who heralded an era of reform and revolution in our country and was fondly called as papa by many he was Lakshman Rao Kashinath Kirloskar In a pre-independence era when religion was sacrosanct and discrimination was rampant he had the foresight and the courage to lead the country towards progress equality and economic freedom He had five children and a doting wife but his family comprised the countless people who helped him chart and complete his journey towards engineering excellence born on the 20th of june 1869 lakshman rao's love for machines and drawing brought him from dharwad to jj school of art mumbai but partial color blindness compelled him to quit painting not one to be discouraged by adversities he shifted his focus entirely to machines All he had was an inquisitive mind and the unwavering support of his eldest brother Ramuan who stood by him like a rock throughout his extraordinary journey. His skills and engineering acumen landed him a job at the prestigious Victoria Jubilee Technical Institute VJTI where he taught mechanical drawing. And like every other success story this too began in the most modest manner on a most ordinary day. when lakshman rao saw a man riding a bicycle kirloskar brothers was thus born in 1888 the road ahead was not exactly smooth especially since he didn't know what complacency was all about luckily he found the perfect life partner in radhabai who was calm, kind and had complete faith in her husband's dreams. The financial support and the encouragement he received from Shrimad Bala Saheb Pant and Rambau Ginde also helped him tide over the setbacks he faced in his constant endeavor of enriching lives. After resigning from VJTI, he was now setting up windmills and selling bicycles in Belgaum. He had moved to a more a little away from the city. He read technical books and magazines such as American Machinist and Scientific American regularly. He chanced upon a catalog that had information about a fodder cutting machine, and within no time, the bicycle shop doubled up as a production hub, and the first fodder cutter by Kirloskar Brothers hit the market in 1901. He soon found himself silver plating the temple spire of Goddess Yamai in Aund, followed by an opportunity to build a spacious assembly hall at the behest of the Raja of Aund. His penchant for technical perfection resulted in the first ever iron plow, a boon that was initially despised but later embraced by the strong-headed farmers. When Lokmanya Tilak himself visited the factory, he marveled at his work and said, "Kirloskar, you are doing a great national service. Industrial growth is an absolute must for India, even after she becomes independent." Due to the expansion plans of the municipality, Lakshman Rao had to soon vacate the moor, which was then christened as Thalakwadi. The Raja of Aunt came to his rescue and offered him 32 acres of arid land close to Kundal Road Station. The land was home to hostile cacti and reptiles. Taming and transforming it into a township with just 14,500 rupees in his pocket and an army of about 30 factory workers seemed like a far cry. But within no time, he changed it into a throbbing township called Kirloskarwadi. He got Piriamang, a dacoit serving his life sentence, and a few others released from jail, entrusting them the responsibility of guarding Kirloskarwadi. 
he uprooted several sordid customs that caused a divide in the name of caste, religion or social status. When a priest refused to solemnize the weddings of untouchables, he assigned this task to his friend. He said, Kidlos Garwadi is a new township where all of us live like a family. There is no room for discrimination here. Although he despised playing cards, he encouraged cricket, football and even plays staged entirely by women. A community hall was built to host cultural programs at Kirlos Garwadi. Baburao Painter and his assistants built a stage that witnessed some of the finest events. A small printing press was set up too and thus Kirloskar Khabar and magazines like Kirloskar Stri, a magazine for women empowerment and Manohar came into being. Here was a place that was way ahead of its time, where plays, plows and periodicals coexisted in peaceful harmony. His business principle was simple, keep the profit margin low and focus hard on market expansion, he said. So when cast iron was short in supply, he procured hundreds of rusted cannons as raw material to make plows and address the issue of rising costs. Such was his ingenuity that even when the economic winds were not in his favour, he went on to push the boundaries of innovation with products like sugarcane crusher, lathe, textile machines, peanut sheller, hand pump and hospital furniture. Lakshman Rao was keen on keeping pace with the world. He had therefore sent his son Shantanu and nephew Madhav to study at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, the best engineering college in the world. Blessed with sons as ingenious and industrious as him, together they could scale new heights. The enterprise, now a limited company, had spread its wings in Harihar, Bangalore and Pune. What's interesting is that Lakshman Rao always referred to the factory as your factory while talking to his people. In the later years, the industrialist in him yearned to become an agriculturist too. When farmers were aghast at his idea of growing grapes in Kirlos Karwadi, he had simply replied, Come again after two years. You will have all the grapes as you want. Lakshman Rao was a staunch supporter of Swadeshi. He also started wearing khadi. Pandit Jawahar Lal Nehru, during his visit to Kirlos Karwadi, had said, The tiny state of Aund has set a commendable example of progress and generosity. Lakshman Rao was not a philanthropist, but public good was at the core of everything he did. So when Parulekar, the founder editor of the Daily Sakar approached him for a fundraising drive for famine affected people. He donated his entire bank balance, amounting to 8,000 rupees. Lakshman Rao was so immersed in his work that he barely found time to be with his family. Even when Radha Bai passed away, he could not be by her side, as he was busy inoculating villagers in Ramapur against plague. Be it for his persistent efforts to draw the government's attention to the Koena Dam project that was abandoned by the Tatars or for his eagerness to help young entrepreneurs excel in their chosen fields, he had become a role model for all. But Kirlos Karwadi could not weather the winds of change. Employees were now tasting the fruits of the modern labour law. The behaviour of one particular labour leader disturbed him so much that he decided to bid adieu to the very land that was holding its ground purely on his creative genius. After a lot of persuasion, the Kirloskar brothers, Lakshman Rao, now 81, and Ramuanna, 91, visited Kirloskar Wadi together one last time to participate in the 40 years celebrations. Lakshman Rao made Hariyar his new home for some time, where he continued farming. Despite Shantanu Rao's attempts to call him to Pune, he insisted, I shall not come there until the first oil engine comes out from the factory. This was typically his way of motivating people. 
The first oil engine was unveiled in December 1948 and Lakshman Rao agreed to fly to Pune. The sky was clear and the flight he took from Bangalore flew over Kirlos Garwadi. The creator watched from above his creation in all its glory. The roads, the houses, the buildings and the factory sheds. Such a moment of pride. A professor, a self-proclaimed Ghisadi, craftsman, a social reformer, a pioneer, the Devanovound, the machine man and the Henry Ford of India, Lakshman Rao Kirloskar. His voice reverberates in the minds of those he inspired. Keep working, never give up. Success will come your way, he'd always say. It is this very spirit that has ignited the restless minds of the younger Kirloskars who continue to enrich lives the world over, focusing on the human factor in all their endeavors. The perennial pursuit for excellence continues. So does his legacy.